Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back again. This time we're going to explore Wireshark. Now, if you haven't had the opportunity to, I highly suggest you go back and review my basics in Wireshark. It tells you how to set it up so that your screen looks a lot like mine. I do some funky things with the UI to make it a little bit easier to read, uh, and I would just go in and follow that video. If you've already explored that video, let's dive into this one. I will provide this practice PCAP on my Google Drive. You can find it in the description below, but let's jump into this. Before we dive too far into it, I really want to go in and understand or allow you to understand what Wireshark is. It's a packet sniffing tool, meaning that as network traffic goes from point A over to point B, it sends different data through the loop. Wireshark captures the packets that's associated with that travel of that network traffic, and then it captures it so we can read it. Now, where a lot of students have some confusion is that there's always a source and there's always a destination. Now, a lot of times that source is the computer you're operating from or it's the main client, but not always. As a matter of fact, about 50% of the time and sometimes even more, it's actually the destination. Now, that can get a little bit confusing, so let's break this down a little bit better. The source IP address, the source IP address right here in this column, that's where the traffic is coming from. It doesn't matter if it's your client, it doesn't matter if it's the server, it doesn't matter where it's coming from. Wireshark does not care. Wireshark goes through and says, this is the source IP of where that traffic is coming from, and the destination is where the traffic is going to. And if you notice on line one, here in our packet, in our, in our practice, we can see that 101 is our source, but on the very next line, it becomes our destination. Now, that's important to know because we wanna know where the traffic is coming from and where it's going to. And that always doesn't mean that the source is your client. Sometimes the source is the server or another client on the other end. Uh, and all that is constituted by that specific IP address. The very first thing that we need to take into account is our timing. Now, the timing can be different based on what we're looking at. You can see here on Wireshark that the time is set up for a specific date. In this case, 2024-0625 at 9.26 in the morning. Now this can be different based on what you're trying to do. And if you're taking an exam or a quiz or something of the like, then you need to set your time associated with that properly. To do that, it's fairly simple. We're just gonna go into view. We're gonna go down to time display format. And then we just need to pick which type of time we want. A lot of quizzes or exams that have to do with Wireshark are more often than not taken in and it's saying, hey, the second since the first packet was captured. So in this case, we're gonna set ours up like that. And we're gonna go, this is when the second since the first packet was captured. And here we can see that our time display format on our Wireshark has changed appropriately. It's gone through and said our first packet that we very first captured was at 0000. This is the start point of this packet capture. Now, if we're doing the real world event, it's more often than not in a time display format, which is how it was initially set up. Now that I have my time set up, if I have a question that specifically relates to a specific time index on our PCAP, I can quickly identify where it is. Uh, a lot of times that might be four seconds or maybe whatever, uh, 4.198, whatever it is, I can quickly go through, find the exact time sequence that it's asking for, and then be able to look at the specific packet that the quiz question wants me to answer. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, URLs. A lot of times, we'll get a quiz question that asks us specifically what URL was visited. In this case, how do I find that information? Well, let's say on this specific line that I'm looking for a URL that's specific to an HTTP traffic. So we can see here that I've got different topic types under the protocol. I've got TCP, then I've got HTTP, there could be FTP, there could be a variety of different traffic types associated with a specific protocol. To filter through those, I can literally type in this display filter different preconceived concepts. For instance, I could do TCP traffic and just do TCP, and it should sort it by TCP. However, you'll notice that HTTP traffic is still in there. Uh, men are mingled with TCP, and that's because HTTP traffic still utilizes a form of, HT, of TCP, excuse me. So that's not necessarily helpful in going through that process. However, if I did FTP, and I actually had FTP traffic, then I would see it here. If I wanted HTTPS traffic, instead of typing HTTPS, which as you can denote here, doesn't have anything, 
I would want to use SSL or HTTPS traffic link. Finally, I want HTTP traffic, so I'm just going to type in HTTP. And here you can see that it provides me nothing but HTTP traffic. It does not provide me HTTPS traffic. Now, assuming I want to get the URL, I have a specific time sync, or maybe it's asking me what the first uh, URL that I visited. If this question is asking me for a specific URL, we don't have that information in the source or the source port, even the destination or destination port. We literally don't have any of the information in here. That's because the information is down here. If I scroll down, I can see the hypertransfer protocol right there. And if I expand that, I can quickly find that the full request URL is actually the goat.com. That provides us with that URL associated specifically with this IP address. Now, which IP address? Well, the source is 101, the destination is 102. In this case, it's going to be 102. That's going to be the goat.com. And I can refer back to that if I scroll up a little bit to the Internet Protocol version 4. I can see source 192.101, destination is 192.168.56.102. That's going to be the URL associated with it, and I can quickly identify that URL because of that. That's it for this video. We'll see you next time when we explore a little bit more on Wireshark. Don't worry, I'm going to make an entire series over this so that if you are a little bit lost on Wireshark, we're going to come back to it. We're going to intermingle some new concepts and how to find those other information as you're going through those quiz exam questions on Wireshark. Until next time, I'm Dr. K.